in studio. Michael! Michael Pomodari. <laughs> yes! Is back again. Yeah, Michael! man. I was really hoping to hear that sound bite. You have no idea how much I've missed that sound bite. <laughs> Michael! 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 I actually brought my Michael, audience with Michael. me. That's what you hear right there, everybody. <laughs> I want to make take that sound bite of Michael and make that my ringtone for like whenever you contact this me. This one? Michael! Yes, yes. That's like your that's your ringtone from here on out. Comedian Michael Palmondary, welcome back to the show. Thanks, man. Thanks for having me back. I appreciate it. Good to have the friend of the show back. Yeah. I say the friend of the show because you're the only one. Well, then that means that there's a special <laughs> bond here. Yeah, a special place in our hearts here for Michael Palmondary. So what's been going on, man? You've been gone a while. Oh, man. I've been busy. Yeah, doing shows, all kinds of things. But now things are kind of like slowing down a little bit. But I'm getting ready for that new year. So you do, you do a show uh, where you riff on movies. I do, yeah. I do a show called Brews and Bad Movies, which is in Chicago. We do it at the Lincoln Lodge, um, which is a great venue. And uh, we have a show January 20th there. We're going to be showing the movie Judge Dredd. Uh, and we have comedians Ali Drapos and Chris Higgins on that show, and I'll be hosting it. But it's so much fun. So we give, we give, we have three comics, uh, and my friend uh, and co-producer Brandon Prosek, he and I go back and forth between hosting the shows. And uh, all three comics do about five to seven minutes each, which is just a way to like introduce the audience to the people that will be riffing on the movie. Oh, great. And we play a film, and then all three of us like riff on it throughout the time. And, you know, we allow audience members to, like, interact with it and things, too. So it's it's very much like uh, uh, sitting in, like, a living room with, like, your friends and family sure. and just, like, watching a bad movie and all that stuff. So, yeah, we do that monthly, every well, month in Chicago. But also in the vein of uh, Mystery Science Theater 3000. Yes. Um, which, by the way, I saw that live. Yes. How was that? One of the one of the funniest things I've ever seen. Yeah, absolutely. Like, I mean, they, they really they really have that dialed. Yes. Uh, you know, because you know, I don't know if you know this about that show, which I found out and it blew my mind. They write that show. It's not improvised. So they don't. Sit, I did know that. Yes, they sit and mm-hmm. watch the movie over yep. and over again, find out little points where they can yep. insert jokes, and uh, they make it sound like it's all off the cuff. Well, and that's one of the things that's like you you know it's like really well done where it sounds like it's made off the top of their head. Yeah, that's one of the biggest differences between Brews and Bad Movies and Mystery Science is like we don't plan anything that we say. It's like it's all just like improvising. So you, you don't, you don't even watch the movie ahead of time. No, and we just watch to the get... movie ahead of time just so we know well that well like we can we can show it. Like yeah. is, is this appropriate like for <laughs> our for our audiences? Okay. Okay. But we always watch it ahead of time because you just never know if there's going to be something like, well, we can riff off of something like this, you know, at some point in the movie. But I mean, yeah. it's not like uh, we have to sit and write things about it. We no just kind notes of or anything? To... No, not really. We just let it all flow naturally, I you like know, that. especially because like we don't make the comics watch it. They can. Sometimes yeah. it's great if the, if a comic has never seen it before <laughs> because <laughs> like, well, like I think there was what we watched uh, Jingle All the Way and there was oh. a comic who was like in her very early 20s. I don't even think she was born when the movie was around so she had never seen it before and her her take on the movie was so funny because <laughs> obviously like there were things that were said in that movie that just like people deem not appropriate now which is sure. like, something that gets brought up a lot in movies that you you see in like the 90s or before yeah there's definitely definitely a uh a change. Yeah. There's definitely been a change. There's definitely been a huge change. I shift, watched man. Jingle All the Way on Disney Plus. Yeah. Uh, just the other day, and there were parts that I was sure they were going to cut out that yes. they didn't. That they, oh, really? That they left in. Oh, all right. Yeah. Oh, um, man. Best part about movie. it, though, Phil Hartman, the late, great Phil Hartman. Oh, man, yeah. I mean, he. If anything, he makes that movie worth watching every year. He's a, he's such a good like antagonist oh, in know. that in that film. Oh man, such I a love sleaze it. bag. Oh, he's like a little weasel in uh, that. Howard, film. your wife's cookies are out of this world. <laughs> Put the cookie down. Yeah, right. Put the cookie down now. Now, <laughs> who said you could eat my cookies? <laughs> he's just like yelling at a payphone in the middle of the sidewalk. Uh, you know what we just did, by the way. What's uh, that? We need a bell. Uh, white guys doing Arnold Schwarzenegger gets a bell. Oh, is that a good thing or a bad thing? No, it's just that every white guy will do it oh. if Arnold is brought up. So did an angel just get its wings yes. or something like that? <laughs> every time a white guy does an Arnold impression, an angel, angel gets, gets its, its wings. wings. It's like that with Christopher Walken, too, because yes. like every white comic male like improviser, they always do a Christopher Walken impression. Have you? Oh, wait. This reminds Have you ever heard Dave Grohl tell the story about Christopher Walken? One of my favorite introducing things. Introducing Foo Fighters on, on Saturday Night Live. It is one of my favorite stories of all time, and, and Dave Grohl does a fantastic Christopher Walken impression, does he too. Not, I know it's awesome. It's so good. I have the audio somewhere. Please play it. I, I do. It'll take me a minute. Okay. Maybe I'll play it when we come back. Do uh, it because we're gonna we're gonna do the tool of the day. Sweet. Uh, oh, we'll love do it. that after Allison Chains right now. ACDC. Michael. 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 Michael.
Bill Plumadary in studio on the Morning X. I love it, dude. Yeah. Uh, before we went to songs there, we were talking about uh, Dave Grohl talking about uh, Christopher Walken introducing the Foo Fighters on Saturday Night Live. I yeah. found the audio. Ladies and gentlemen, Foo Fighters. <laughs> <laughs> That's the way Grohl uh, impersonated Oh, him. it's so good. Not it's bad. so good. If you ever have time to like uh, watch the him tell the whole story in an interview, go to YouTube, check it out. It's so good. <laughs> it is. And he, he does a very good walk in there. He does a very good walk in. But we got to give him a bell. Ah, uh, yes. White guys do walking. Another like, angel got its wings, man. Right. Walking or Arnold. Walking or, yeah, those are the two. Those are the two right there. Oh, my gosh. Standbys is the two white guy impression standbys. That's right. Those are those are our uh, the ones we all have in our pocket. But those are such like dad things to do, you know? Those but, are like white guy things to do. Before you do it, though, you have to ask. You guys like impressions? Yes. Well, I used to do a, a really bad bit about making fun of impressions. And the, the things you have to do with impressions is before you ever do an impression, you have to ask the audience if they like impressions. And then you have to say what the impression is twice, and then you have to execute the impression. Yes. And impressions nowadays have, like, gone from impersonating a person to, like, impersonating different things. Like, I've seen people do impressions of, like, this is what a phone sounds like on Viabrate on, like, a patio table. <laughs> I've literally seen somebody do that, and it's hysterical. But that's like what impressions are nowadays. Interesting. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Let's just show you the evolution of comedy has totally changed, man. <laughs> Wrap really your mind hasn't. around that. No, we're no, all it's just not. jackasses trying to get attention. That's I all. I love we are. how people like comics. Like you'll talk to them before a show or an open mic, and they'll try to talk like I'll be all philosophical about their jokes, and then they go up there and they do a set about weed and their crotches. <laughs> right. It's just like what? <laughs> what? Right? How uh, are you trying to sound like Aristotle, and then you go? up and that's your set comedians are the only people who will have a serious conversation about poop jokes yeah exactly yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly that's, that's exactly what it is it's just like deconstructing a fart joke it's like what are we this is what we do with our lives folks honestly i've been doing it 10 years i do not care about the art anymore i no. just i just want to go up and have fun that's all yeah yeah that's all. seriously because if i'm not having fun then it's just like why am i doing this right exactly hey uh we gotta get to something here uh, the tool of the day i love it <laughs> That guy's a tool. You're a tool. Tool of the day. Your tool of the day is always powered by Retool of Rockford on East State Street. And uh, this time we go to Delaware. <laughs> Hi, I'm in Delaware. Uh, <laughs> hey, we're in Delaware. <laughs> we don't get a lot of Delaware tools of the day, so I like to welcome Delaware to the club. Welcome Today's Delaware. tool of the day's name is Mick Roberts Williams. Yes, Wait, what? Michael, his first name is Mick Roberts. His name isn't Mick <laughs> Roberts, it's Mick Roberts Williams. That's correct. Oh, he's already a tool. <laughs> Actually, his parents are because they named him that. I, I hope they did too. That's a white thing too. Yeah. Is, uh, white people name their kids last names. Yep, or two first names. Yeah. Oh God, creepy. Um, but he robbed a Wells Fargo bank in Wilmington on Sunday. He walked up to the bank teller, handed her a note that said, "Quote: This is a robbery. I need a hundred fifty dollars." I mean, way to go for the big bucks, right? <laughs> Okay, okay. <laughs> it's it's kind of a specific amount, right? Yeah, yeah. It's just like, well, how much is uh, how much are all my utilities? Around 150? <laughs> okay, that's what I'll ask for. He couldn't even ask a friend or a family member, like, hey, I'm kind of in a bind. Can you Venmo me like 150? Right. I'll get you back next payday. You can think of a robber saying, empty the register. Yeah, or empty the vault. Give me all the money. Give me all the money you have. He's like, no, actually, if you could give me that back in all 20s and a couple of 10s, that would be great. Uh, and then he stopped at the ATM outside of the bank. <laughs> Wait, there's more. And okay. deposited the money into his own <laughs> bank account. Yes. Oh, my gosh. Why didn't he just have them do that when he was at the window? Right. You're already there. Yeah, exactly. But instead of going to another ATM, he's just like, you know what? There's one right here. I love the idea of like him going on his phone and being like, ATMs near me. He's like, oh, there's one 200 feet from me. That's so convenient. <laughs> right. The I only, just robbed this place. The only thing that would have made this dumber is if he'd been at the teller window, said, this is a robbery. I need 150 bucks. Please deposit it into my account number 84356. Yeah, 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 y
exactly. She's like, well, I'm going to need to see some ID first. He's like, come on. I bank here all the time. You know me. I'm Mick Roberts. How many other people do you know here that are named Mick Roberts? Right. That's my first name. <laughs> exactly. Wow. So the police eventually found him behind a nearby shopping center. And can you believe the story gets dumber? I just like the fact that there's still more to this. There is. He told police that he traveled to Delaware by riding the exterior of a cargo train and that his mind is currently being controlled by a third party through an implant located somewhere in his body. I mean... (laughs) I'm just, like, in shock now. So, there is somebody controlling his mind. Obviously, that person... Is a dumbass. Yeah. Well, the fact that he <laughs> robbed a bank for $150 is already indication that he's a dumbass. Right. So whoever's controlling his brain isn't helping him. No, not at all. Not at all. Whoever's controlling his brain is an even bigger idiot. He's like, hey, we're going to need $150. <laughs> this. You sure I shouldn't ask for more? No, 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 no. We're going to rob the place. We don't want to rob him clean. All right. We want to... We want at least a small petty crime. He was charged with second-degree robbery, currently being held on $6,000 cash bond. Don't be a tool like Mick Roberts. His bond is more than what he asked for. That's right. (laughs) What an idiot. Don't be a tool like this guy, but you need the right tool for your job. Retool of Rockford on East State Street probably has what you're looking for. It's wall-to-wall stuff in there. Go in, see my buddy Dave. Tell him the Morning X sent you. Or visit rockfordretool.com. And now those words you'd long for your whole life. I've got a tattlehead pork and egg. More on the Morning X after this. The Real Rock Report on the Morning X. It is time for the Real Rock Report at 947, powered by Oscars Pub and Grill in Jack's Pub. Here's Lou. Guns and Roses, they're set to celebrate. Hey, 30th. slap that and start over. <laughs> All right. Why wow, is it not working? It wasn't for a second. Now, no. now go. Fantastic. Guns and Roses set to celebrate their 30th anniversary of Use Your Illusion. Uh, year late slash less. There's a box set that combines both albums. It got delayed because of the pandemic, but it's coming out. He thinks it'll be out in the summertime. Bunch of live stuff on it, including shows GNR did at the Ritz from the early 90s and shows they did in Las Vegas back in '89. Going to be packed into that. Danny Carey of Tool, we talked about this yesterday. He's slated to appear in Kansas City Court on January 12th for his arrest. In the alleged assault on Sunday at the KC Airport, now Carey was booked for misdemeanor assault and released on bond. He could face up to a almost $1,400 fine. He allegedly assaulted an employee working security at the airport. So you're assaulting an airport security guard. That's You're done. That's number one. Uh-huh. Uh, apparently, he was poking the guy in his chest with two fingers and repeatedly using a gay slur towards the person. Ooh. So this doesn't sound like it's going to end really well mm. for Danny Carey uh, of Tool at all. And Chris Cornell's daughter, Tony Cornell, she's going to perform a special song in honor of her dad on Jimmy Fallon. That's going to happen tonight. Natural Rock Report, powered by Oscars Pub and Grill on East State and Jack's Pub on North Perryville. They're both open at 11. We'll set you up with 475 Captain Morgan's, Tito's, Jameson, and Screwball every day, plus 425 House Wines Daily. Well, Tool's going to need a new drummer soon. Talk about retool of the day. I I don't think (laughs) they would do it. I just don't think they would do it. I think they would either disappear or just power through it. They can't. Tool, tools drummer is Tool's drummer. I don't think anyone could fill in. I don't think so either. Look, aside from, I, I just that's the vibe of the band that I kind of get that they're going to be like, well, we're going to power through it, and one of us gets canceled, we're done. Well, yeah, but I mean, it's one of those things where, like, when things like that happen, like you know, people that are diehard fans will stick with people and artists. Regardless of what that happens, happens absolutely. You know? Yeah, they're able to separate the art from the artist, right? I guess, which you know, people are trying to cancel Michael Jackson. Who's not going to listen to Thriller? Yeah, it's still played all the time. All the time, yeah, man. Still right. played all the time. Right. Um, windy today, by the way. Oh, is it? Yeah. <laughs> gonna be windy again. Yeah, dude. You're good. It's so windy out, man. There's a branch that came off a tree on the golf course right next to us here, and I'm like, wow. That was just luck, because it had that branch gone the other way, and I don't know that we have a roof on this studio. Oh, man. Because it's, like, right here off the corner uh-huh. of the studio, and I'm pulling in, I'm like, oh, yeah, good thing that went that way. Well, the thing that bothers me is, like, yesterday it was, like, 65, and I was wearing a light jacket, it's and disturbing. now today it's, like, 30 degrees colder, and I'm just, man, I, I don't know how to prepare for the weather <laughs> ever living in the Midwest. I, uh, I, I, del- I Somebody, uh, a weather service that I follow on uh, Facebook, because I'm that much of a nerd. Um, posted something yesterday and said we're having a wonderful June this December. <laughs> like, yeah, 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 that just exactly. summed it right up. That's yeah, perfect. Yeah. Yesterday felt like it was like a, 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 like a fall day or something like yeah. that. It was, pre- it was like, pretty what? nice. It was very nice. I if mean, you don't count the wind. I was going to say the wind, wind was a lot, which we still have today. Yeah, we do. That's your weather report. Find more details at rockrivercurrent.com.
Uh, the voice of Michael Palmandary. Hey, Michael. Hey, what's up, dude? Michael! <laughs> <laughs> Again, still. Are you in the uh, holiday spirit there, Michael? Am I in the holiday spirit? Yeah. I mean, I don't know if I'm not in the holiday spirit. I mean, I, I've got all my Christmas presents purchased, so that's like a stress that I don't have to worry about anymore. Uh, I'm staying in town, so I don't have to worry about traveling. I mean, I do like the holidays, uh, but I do also like to budget money, and I also like to... You know, not go out in public too much when it gets closer to the holidays. Yeah, you want to stay away. Yeah, much, yeah, yeah, especially like when you perform too. Like there gets to be a point in time where you're just like, okay, I've had too much public right now. Do you have Christmas material that you would do on stage? Like if it, if you had a Christmas time I show, I don't. I don't like to do material that's only seasonal. I do, I like to do material that I can do any time of the year, any any point in time. You know, you know. I mean, every once in a while, it's okay. To, like if you see something in your environment that you can reference, like the decorations or sure. something. It's like, well, this is only going to happen this one time. But I don't like the idea of being like, well, this is my December joke. <laughs> you know, I can only do it this time. I, I, I was workshopping for a couple of, a couple of uh, weeks, not recently. This was earlier in my, in my career. I, mm-hmm. I was going for some hot Boxing Day material. Okay. You know, the day after Christmas is yeah, Boxing yeah, yeah. Day. Yeah. And it was very Seinfeldy and very, oh, what do they punch people? You know? Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know how you feel because I used to do a huge bit about Arbor Day. So. <laughs> <laughs> I had to cut that one because I was upsetting too many people who celebrate Arbor Day. Well, we are uh, anti Christmas, uh, anti Christmas music on uh, 1049 The X. We have a no Christmas music guarantee. Okay. Every season this year, presented by 815 Gardens, where if you catch us playing a full Christmas song, uh, you win 104 bucks. Okay. And a hundred dollar gift card from eight one five Gardens. It's not bad. Your homegrown hydro store. All right. Uh, and uh, it doesn't count when we play our fake parody Christmas songs here. Yeah, okay. it's got to be a real one. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's got to be a real, like a real full one. Legit, at least a full song too. Yeah, I was playing a clip earlier, and uh, somebody tried to call in and win. Nah, That's not going to work. All that right. Way. No loopholes it's here, be folks. The full thing. I, I, I preface this with that because there is a new Morning X. Christmas classic. Parody. Is there really now? Yes. Uh, you've heard of Santa Baby. Uh huh. You know, which is basically Earth a Kid or Madonna, whatever version you know, uh, being a complete gold digger uh, to Santa Claus. Absolutely. Uh, now, what if the same song was written by somebody who hated Santa Claus? Had some beef with Santa. Santa, I mean, if you listen to some of the songs, Santa, it, kind of a creepy, weird dude. Um, so this kind song. Kind of. Yeah. So he's hanging out he with He knows kids. when you're sleeping, he knows when you're awake. Yep. Yeah. That's a stalker. Precisely. Uh, and that's why this song dedicated to Santa. <laughs> it's called Santa A-Hole. And it's on the Morning X. Santa A-Hole, you forgot to bring me a toy this year. You said I was a bad boy, Santa a-hole. So hurry up and go f*** yourself. (laughs) Santa jerkwad, why did you make out with my mom? That's wrong. Now my father is gone, Santa jerkwad. I hope that you fall out of your sleigh. Think of all the things I did To make you think that I was such a normal kid To be so good, it makes me sick But you had to go and be such a dick (laughs) Santa a-hole Why do you watch me when I sleep, you creep? (laughs) Thank you. Exactly. (laughs) That is really not cool, Santa pervert. They don't serve cookies in jail. (laughs) Yes. Yes. And again, that does not count toward the no Christmas music guarantee. I love it. Just going to point that out. I love it. Right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Can I call in maybe and try to win some money on that? Uh, Yeah, maybe not. All right. All right. I think you're you're quite a regular fixture on the show. If you want something from us, we'll just give it to you. All right. Sweet, sweet. (laughs) I love the idea that I would have to call in even though I'm sitting right across from you. Can you do that for the elf? Because I hate the elf on the shelf. I hate oh, it. Man. I hate it. <laughs> I hate it. I hate the people that created it. I want to find them, and I want five minutes alone in a room with them. <laughs> That's all I want. That's all I want for Christmas. That's like what family members say about somebody that like committed a crime against a family member. There's give me no, five just, minutes in a room alone with I them. I just want the people that created that's, the elf. That's, that's all that's I want. That's the venom you have with the person who created Elf on that's the shelf. That's all I want. That thing causes nothing but problems in my house. <laughs>
Wow. <laughs> Nothing but problems. Fights over who it likes more, where it's going to be tomorrow, who's stocking it might be. Sit- it just, it's nothing Which but problems. Which shelf it's going to be on next. Three o'clock in the morning. Hey, did the elf move last night? <laughs> I don't know. Let me go downstairs and check at three o'clock in the morning and make sure he found his way to wherever he was supposed to go next. <laughs> that sounds terrifying, I hate though. that thing. Wow. But having kids is such a magical thing in your life. No, yeah, it's not. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, yeah, it's right, annoying. Right. It's expensive and it's annoying. Wow. <laughs> Tell us how you really feel about it, you know? The holidays, you know. <laughs> In the holiday spirit, you know? I like how that the song, like, it sounded like an angry union guy on a smoke Yeah, break. right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Just, like, lamenting his childhood to, like, all the other guys, like, on break with them. But In instead my head, he goes into song. In my head, that's the voice of somebody who writes us angry Facebook messages. Sure. You yeah. guys are nothing but a different version of the eagle. You sound wrong by Santa. You definitely, yeah. That guy sounds wrong by Santa. Yeah, absolutely. If there's anybody he's got anything against in this world, it's Santa Claus. <laughs> we got to wrap up the Morning Acts for today. Michael Palmandari, real quick, plug that, that uh, movie show you got again. Oh, yeah. It'll be January 20th, Brews and Bad Movies, Lincoln Lodge Theater in Chicago, Illinois. It's uh, at 7.30 p.m. I'm hosting Ali Drapos as well as Chris Higgins, and we're going to be playing Judge Dredd starring Sylvester Stallone. <laughs> That's probably the third white guy impression. Hit the thing. Get oh, an you... angel its wings. Oh, yeah. You get the bell. Yeah, there you go. There's the three. <laughs> There's the three. Sly Stallone. <laughs> And uh, yeah, well, uh, we're happy to have you on anytime, of course. Oh, dude, I appreciate and, uh, you as always.